Nice to see you. Happy. Very diff difficult situations for me, so obstacles, so I may be happy after. Um, but let's try with an experience. Um, all of you got a, a straw in your back. Do you have your back with you? Okay, that's fine. Now, you're going to try to breathing in, breathing out, and do that few seconds, a little bit more than a few seconds. Not, not with your nose, only with your mouth. Okay, and just trying to remain the emotion you had. What happened to you when you made that exercise? Be short of oxygen. And I'm going to come back to that experience a little bit later. But this evening, my purpose is to re looking to money. Well, everybody knows money, you have money in your pocket. But it's highly likely that money is something else that you're thinking about it. And then questions. Who knows here who produced, who created money? Is it government that create money? Good. Is it the, cen Hold on. Is it the central bank who create money? Yes, very good. Or is it the private banks who create money? Only one or two. Wow, excellent. Well, in fact, 90 to 95 percent of our money has been created by bank, private bank. Only five percent through central bank. So it's a private activity. When you borrow money at the bank, you create money from nothing. Okay, difficult to understand. That's why I would like to start not with the financial courses here, but I would like to start with a game. And I suppose, well, another question. Who has already played with Monopoly game? Wow, you love that game. Me too, that's fine. <laughs> what a game. Monopoly. Everybody has played with Monopoly. It's, Monopoly, it's a, it's a copy of our financial system. There is a bank, it's a private bank. There are players, there are selling, buying, and so on. So you have players around the table. Yeah, good. Some of them are loafing, drinking, whiskey, gin. They are selling, buying, hotels, streets. Sometimes they're going to jail. And at the end of the, at the, end of the game, what happened? You have one winner. Wow, I would like to be that winner because we are in a competitive world. It's fine to be the winner. But if there is a winner, all the other are loser. Yeah, well, that's fine, that's the rules. In fact, I invite you to look at the end of that game with other eyes, other glasses. Because at the end of that game, no one could play anymore, even the winner. So even the winner became a loser. He could not play anymore. So that game shows us the game is over, and it's a collective death game. Nobody could play anymore. But you say, well, is that in our society also? What's the link? Well, the link, I show you the link. Inequalities. In 2000, 
and then 388 billionaires owning as much as the half of the poorest people on the planet, which is around 3 billion people. 3 billion people are outside of the game. Five years later, 62 billionaires owning the same things. It's going fast, it's going quick, just like in a monopoly. And today, today, 8 billion, 8 billionaires own the same wealth as 3.6 billion people. You see the trend? 380, 62, 8. Is that sustainable, going that trend? Next year, when I will come here, only one people will own the same wealth as the half of the planet? There is something wrong in the system. We will look what's wrong in the system. And so, the second aspect of our money, it's the capacity of speculation. And speculation, it's 98% of the financial market. 98% are diverse from the market to speculation. And only 2% are allocated to the real economy, goods and services. So the people who are in the real economy had the same experience as you had at the beginning of the talk here. Short of oxygen, they are short of money. Not because we are short of money on the planet, no. It's because the financial institution and bank players pay most of the money with speculation rather than production and consumption. Wow. Five years ago, five years ago I didn't know that. But let me invite you to another game. In 2012, Ben Alietar, who is an expert on complementary currencies and financial systems in the world, invite a new game. And that game will try to change the rules and see what happened. Because some things I didn't told you is that with the monopoly, we've tried to invite four wise people around the game. And we say, well, try to change the trend of the game. And they haven't been able to do it. The systems who are behind the architecture of the money doesn't allow to change the trend. So Polymoney, it started like a monopoly. And after six rounds, same things, one, one player win and the other are lost. And then we introduce a first mm, complementary currency, another currency within the game. And that currency allowed people start to exchange services and goods. And it changed completely the ambiance around the game because the loser were able to come back and, and stay player. And at the end of the game, there is no loser. Everybody win because we have introduced another currency which is not dependent for more conventional money. And I can tell you, when I saw the game for the first time, there was so happiness around the game, at the end of the game. It was just amazing. So a game, two games show us what's happening in our society and what could happen if we change the rules by money diversity. But you will say, what's the link with the reality? Well, there is one. In, in Ghent, no far from here, there is a district which is called Rabot. And in that area, you have the half of population are immigrants. And it's one of the poorest area of Belgium. And situation was catastrophic seven years ago. Uh, the common good was destroyed. 
there was a high tension between the local people and the immigrant uh, environment was destroyed and so on. And, and then they decide to go another way to solve the problem, not by increasing security, but they ask the people, what's your dream? What they ask Im immigrant? What would you like to do? What you would like to get to be happy? And 85% of them told, we would like a piece of land, a garden, to grow flowers and vegetables. Then discussions were done, and a complementary currency was designed to answer to that question, the Torica. And how to earn the Torica? You can earn the Torica as an immigrant by giving services to the community. Uh, helping uh, children, cleaning the street, uh, helping elders, and, and so on. And that's the way you can own that money, which is the only way to pay the garden you will receive um, from the city, from the city hall. And what happened? In a six month period, the tension between local people and immigrants disappeared completely. The center of the district was completely renewed, and more than 26 kinds of services to the community was done by the immigrant, which was the enemies six months uh, before. But there are many currencies like that around the world. Following Banari Leta research, there are 15 thousand complementary currencies around the world. Uh, in UK, you have the Bristol Pound. Bristol Pound solved the economical crisis of the city 10 years ago, introducing um, a currency which allow you to pay tax, to pay the bus, to pay food, to pay your rent, even paying energy. And thanks to that, they came out of the crisis, the economical crisis of the city. In Japan, in the, the years 90s, uh, a health crisis, um, the social security institution uh, failed, and no more services for elders and sick people. So they developed a complementary currency, which was the Furia Kipu. And today, 1.8 million people had services uh, thanks to that money. In Brazil, the Banco Palma, there is a Banco uh, currency which has a law in a 10 years period to get out of poverty more than 400 favelas where all the other policies failed before. In Bavaria, Germany, the Kim Gower is a special currency that has been developed to develop organic food and uh, organic agriculture in the region. And it's a real success. But why? Why are we speaking about, uh, and why do we need currencies? Well, we need currencies, uh, a diversity of currencies, because following the scientists, the last 20 years, 96 banking crises happened, 176 monetary crises and 36 sovereign crises. This is not a default. This is really linked with the way we're producing money. Money is produced like a monoculture. And scientists show that monoculture in a complex system is really efficient, but so fragile. There is no resilience. If you have an accident there, then you get a, a, a crisis just like the one we had in 2008. And if you want to take a sample of monoculture, really efficient, it's a pine plantation. Plant plantation is fantastic. It's growing so fast, you get money quickly, great, it's efficient. But one match, and what happened? Fires disappear. No resilience at all. So if we want a sustainable world, we should shift from a monoculture monetary system to a diverse money, uh, money system. And we have a choice. We can go on statu quo, and you will get this one. One person 
um, of the people will have the half of the richnesses on, on our world, or you can go to another world. And to go to another world, I invite you to look in your region for complementary currencies. If you look in Belgium, and I try to change the slide, but it's not working. Okay, so if you look only in Belgium, there are plenty of complementary currencies who are growing now at this stage. And I'm sure that in your region, it's the same things. So I call for action and I invite you to join it. Thank you. <laughs>